Hi, this is David. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about containers and Docker. Containers are a virtualization technology, much like virtual machines are a virtualization technology. However, they're smaller and lighter than virtual machines. A virtual machine sits on top of actual physical hardware and abstracts away that hardware and just contains the operating systems and applications on top of that. A container sits on top of a virtual machine, abstracts away the operating system, and just contains the application and data that's required to run whatever you want to run. And as a result, they are a lot smaller and a lot more lightweight and a lot faster than virtual machines, which gives them some advantages. They are lightweight, they can be restarted very quickly, they can be um, uh, scaled independently and deployed independently. So it gives us a lot of flexibility and agility in our applications and in our data. Docker is a tool that allows you to manage containers. It's a pretty popular tool and we can get Docker to run locally by searching for Docker Desktop right here. I've already got it installed, but if you come here then right here I'm running Windows and click on that if I'm running Win Linux or Mac there are links to that and download it and just walk you through installing here. It's pretty simple. Um, and Docker also has something called Docker Hub which is a registry for hosting your Docker images so that you can share them with other people or with other machines or with something in uh, the virtual machines in the cloud whatever you want to do. And I would recommend doing that as well and you can just click on it. I click on sign in right here. Um, I've already got an account and a cache my credentials so it's all right here. Uh, my registry is my first initial last name. I think you can get to this and read things, but you won't be able to write anything. So if I do a demo that includes this registry, you'll want to create your own registry and replace my first initial last name with whatever you call your registry in order to work with it. Now, I am going to start working with Docker by going to a command prompt, and I will type in Docker run what this will do is it will create a container based on an image in a registry that's what the docker run commands and then it'll run that I'll go into that uh, the details of how it does that later on but there's a couple things in this command that I want to point out right here is the name of the image it's in a repository called getting started and it's in a registry called Docker. Well, Docker is owned by Docker. It's built in. It's available. Anybody can use it. So I'm going to run a pre-built image. I also have this dash D. Dash D says run in detached mode. The, uh, 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 that means that I'm going to run it asynchronously. I'll run the image and I'll come right back to my command prompt here. Um, if I want to run it interactively, I'd say dash IT. Then it would actually take me onto the machine itself. Uh, and I would be or into the container itself. And then finally, dash P is for port mapping. There is the application that's running in this getting started container is a is a web application that's running on port 80. Well, port 80 is not available outside of that container. I need to map it to something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map it to port 3000 instead of port 80. So 3000 on my local machine will map to port 80 inside the container and that has a web page that I'm going to do. So I'm going to execute this command. And it says that, oh, you don't have that, that image locally. I'm going to go out to the Docker registry and find it. Yep, it's there. I'll pull everything down that's required. It's ready. It's going. Um, it's, and it's running. I've got a new container, and it's running here. Um, so uh, once I do that, if I do uh, Docker container ls, then I can see there it is right here, Docker getting started. And it has it was created 22 seconds ago and it's been up for 21 seconds it only took about a second to come up it was pretty fast uh, it also has this id 0bc and we need to use that if we wanted to start and stop it for example we can do that using a docker container stop and we give it the id 0bcc you don't have to type the entire id as long as you type enough for it to be unique in here within your list that is sufficient I can do the same thing and say Docker start 0BC and it's up and running. In fact, let me let me stop it really quickly and I'll show you what happens when I do a Docker container LS. It doesn't show up this way, but if I do a dash A, that shows me 
everything, including the stock ones. You can see the status now is exited. So I will start it again. And now when I do a list, it's now been up for one second. And what's nice about this, remember I said it's running locally. It's running in the container on port 80, but locally that's mapped to port 3000. Well, I can actually see this. Let me do this. I'll say local host colon 3000 right here. And there it is right there. And if I go back, let's put the main page at tutorial, move it there. But this is the code. It's just an HTML right in here. And if I stop it, that container, go ahead and let's few, give it a few seconds to stop. And now that I do that, I list it. You can see the status is now exited. It's not up. And if I refresh this page, I'll do a Control F5 so it's not caching anything. Then it's going to try to find it, and it's not going to find it. And the reason it's not finding it is because it's stopped. Start it again. Come back here. Control F5. It came up very quickly. I've just shown you the basics of Docker. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create your own image push that to a registry, and run a container based on your own custom image. This is David. Thank you for watching.